Aliens Dark Descent is a brand new alien game announced at Summer Games Fest, a surprise to be sure, but it was a very welcomed one. In today's video I want to break down everything we know currently about this new upcoming alien title, by first breaking down the reveal trailer we received, then go into all the information we received from the developers about it. So let's begin with the trailer. first shot of the trailer gives us a few pieces of information for the setting and story location of the game. We are introduced to Tantalus base in the year 2198, setting this story around 19 years after the events of Aliens, taking place a few years before Aliens, Fire Team. We see the base and its immediate surrounding structures in a region covered in snow, so either it's set on an ice world or we are looking at the polar regions of it. In the bottom left of the shot we see what appears to be the N577 being that this game involves the colonial marines and is set around 2198 we could see some transitioning from the united states colonial marines into the united america's colonial marines which is a transition that occurred around this era sergeant leo alvarez of the cm leth recon squad our mission was to enter the tantalus base locate the comsat relay and bring it back online we found the relay but there was a problem Moving on, we are introduced to Leo Alvarez of the Colonial Marine Recon Squad assigned to Lev. Lev being the name of the world the game is set on, I'm pretty sure. Alvarez appears to be giving a debrief about an extraordinary encounter he has had recently. He talks about their mission to bring the Tantalus bases as Comsat back online after being taken down for unknown reasons. Get that door closed now, Private. Close that gate. Nothing gets in here. Ray didn't make it. The lease is a one piece. The next shot jumps back in time to Alvarez and his squad as they enter Tantalus base. There is a mother-like readout on within their current placement, which as far as I can tell doesn't have any useful information on it. We see the marines discovering bodies left behind by an unknown force. A bird eye view of one of the marines shows the whale and Utani logo suggesting that Tantalus base is either their installation or they at least have a presence of some kind there. Willis, take the lead. Oh, this ain't good. What we found was... Moving further into the base, the Marines happen upon a structure all too familiar to us alien fans by now. Fleshy wet tendril-like vintage and resinous growth that gets thicker the further they go appears and can only signify the presence of a Xenomorph XX121 hive structure. Eventually the squad comes upon a lab or testing area of sorts. In one room, we can see a module that contains an overmorph and just above it a Manumolanox hydria or face hugger currently attached to a host with the host appearing to have been a test subject of sorts, being restrained and placed within the machinery. New kind of evil. And it found us first. What the? This was a human. Now for the next shot we get one of the most intriguing and exciting things I've seen in a long time in the Alien universe. Aside from what appears to be some green plant life growth in the deepest parts of the facility we are met from the back by a humanoid looking figure. It is wearing some kind of technological apparatus on its back and around its neck. The back plate has canisters of blue liquid or gas, it's hard to tell for sure exactly what it is. However, the bigger question is just what are these apparatus strapped to? What are these creatures? They appear to be human in origin, possessing humanoid traits however, they also in addition appear quite ghoulish. While slimmer looking, the creatures appear to have lean muscular tissue under their whitish skin. Parts of their arms resemble that of the texture of the forearms of the xenomorph, and the creature's fingers even appear to be tipped with long talon-like nails. These biomechanoids have face masks on that serve an unknown purpose and the technological aspects of their body continues to the front side of their bodies, where we can see a hole in their chest cavity where some kind of power core is located. The canisters on their back, this glowing core and the eyes of the creatures all are illuminated by an eerie light blue glow. Go, go, go! 
what this creature is, its purpose, and origins are currently unknown to us, but it's very likely it is some kind of sick, twisted experiment from the Whalen Yutani Company or one of its many competitors. But before we can get a better look at the creatures, the Xenomorph makes an appearance and proceeds to hunt down the Marines, forcing them into a retreat. Interestingly, the unknown humanoids are seemingly ignored by the XX121s, possibly suggesting that they are synthetic or potentially are genetic hybrids that share the genotype of the Xenomorphs. But not enough is currently known about them to be sure. Alvarez, through that door! Hold that door, Sergeant! Son of a... I don't know what I saw in there. But I know when I close my eyes. I still see it. Now everyone's dead. And someone needs to know. As the Marines make a retreat, a soul Marine leaves the others behind out of fear of what he has witnessed. We see that while this final survivor, Leo, has been narrating the trailer and that he is being surrounded by the creatures, recording a final message to anyone who might dare visit Tantalus Station. We pull out in the final moments of the trailer to see the title card of Aliens, Dark Descent, as well as the Moon Lev that we will be visiting in the game along with a currently unnamed orbital station above it. After this we see some quick shots of the gameplay which is in the top down shooter style before the trailer finally comes to a close. Now let's talk about what exactly this game will be. Announced on the 9th of June 2022 Focus Entertainment and Tindalo's Interactive in collaboration with 20th Century Studios announced and revealed Aliens, Dark Descent, a single player experience based around AI squad play, set to release on PS4 and 5, Xbox Series X, S and 1 as well as on PC. John Burt, Managing Director at Focus Entertainment has stated about Dark Descent, the entire team at Tindalos is dedicated to delivering a gaming experience faithful to the spirit of the Alien franchise and adding its own, never seen before elements to this iconic universe. The gameplay we have developed is unique, inspired from our favourite tactical and CRPG games and packaged in nerve-wracking, real-time action. Translating from film to our game the sheer terror caused by the deadliest species known to man was quite a challenge, but I'm confident most of you will end up in strung out shape, as Hicks himself would say. Romain Clavier, CEO and Creative Director at Tindalo's Interactive said, We're excited to continue expanding upon the beloved Alien franchise with a deeper single-player story experience thanks to the bright minds from our friends at Focus and Tindalo Luigi Pryor. Vice President at Disney, Pixar and 20th Games said, Fans of the franchise should be excited to jump into a new genre experience and a new tactically thrilling gameplay offering, unlike any of our previous Alien game titles. From these statements we can get that this story will be an original take and outing in the Alien universe. What I'm really excited about is their focus and emphasis on the game's single player story. From statements made by the developers, you will be able to customise your marine squad as well as your extensive weapons arsenal, your armour, and add special abilities to your character to help you fight the Xenomorph Scourge, as well as the mysterious new threat bred out of the Tantalus base on the moon left. During your playthrough of the game you will be able to collect resources to repair the Otago, a stranded spacecraft, likely the marine's only way off the moon after perhaps becoming stranded there. You can take control of and strategically use your squad to execute complex action in real time. The environment is also persistent and will be likely visited more than once, so closing off doors and unlocking others and creating safe zones will all go to add a layer of realism to the game as well as giving you the ability to have a permanent impact on the environments you need to survive within. We are warned to be cautious as death of any marine in the game is permanent. No respawns in this game apparently, which I think is a good idea and will make gameplay all that more intense and punishing for players' complacency. You'll need to manage your resources, squad health and tactics carefully to ensure your unit remains alive and in one piece, as well as to build up and defend your main base of operations on the moon which can apparently be grown and expanded over time. On top of the Xenomorphs and the currently unknown enemy force seen in the trailer, we are said to be also facing down other enemy types, new aliens, and operatives of the Whalen-Yutani Corporation. 
so with the release date has only to this point been stated as 2023. But I think it's more likely than not the release date will be some time later in the year, maybe around the Q3 or Q4 timeframe. But until that time I will be doing my best to keep you all updated on any developments surrounding this release and any other in the Alien franchise. If you really want to support what we do here and gain a bunch of awesome rewards, consider joining as a Project Akron channel member like company representatives, the Sith Lord 906, Lewis Perkins, and Jack Fleming Jr., or like our team members, Ronchi, Ambrosia, and Carl from the War Game Bootcamp. Until next transmission, this is Project Akron bringing the knowledge and the power directly to you.